Hello, namaste, assalamualaikum. Welcome to Give for Us. We are the latest cricket news, and today we've got another installment of the road to the ICC T20 World Cup 2021, starting very soon, less than a month now, and it's going to be a very exciting, exciting tournament. I have two very special guests. At first off, I've got Zora, the cricket analyst. Please do check him out. This guy is insta famous, for lack of a better term, right? He is huge on Instagram. So please do check him out. I'll leave all the links in the description below. I've got Rukaya, who is very, very knowledgeable about cricket. Uh, she's a sports enthusiast and apparently a better badminton player than Zora from what I hear. So first off, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you so much. How are you, how are you both doing? Uh, thank you so much, Ajit, for having us over here, man. Uh, I'm not a huge social media star. I don't know where you got that from, uh, but I try. I try my best. And what you were absolutely right about, Rukaya being a better badminton player than me. That's for sure. So let's start off with the team that no one wants to talk about, Pakistan. So uh, <laughs> let's start with Pakistan. <laughs> if you had one player to watch out for from the Pakistani perspective, who would you pick, Rukaya? So for me, I think uh, a lot of people might not agree with this, but I feel like one person who ties this entire Pakistani squad together is Mohamed Rizwan. For me, he's probably, uh, you know, one of the leaders unspoken of because obviously Babar is currently the captain. Uh, but I think Mohamed Rizwan is going to play a key role for Pakistan uh, as that top order batsman, but also behind the stumps, you know, motivating the bowlers, helping out Babar with the strategies, everything. So for me, it's going to be Mohamed Rizwan. Uh, and also, if you're looking at the fast bowling department, um, I think Shaheen Chafridi is just a star. He's probably one of the best bowlers in the world right now. He'd walk into any T20 squad. Uh, so I think for me, those two are the ones to look out for in the Pakistan squad. No, that, that, those are great picks, I must say, because I've for everyone I speak to, all of them have picked Shaheen Afridi or Babar Azam. So Babar Azam. Yeah, it's good to hear Mohammed Rizwan in there. Zora, what about you? Yeah, before I give you my name, I have to say that I'm actually very, very happy with the, the team that Pakistan has announced. I don't know what the controversy is. I think it's probably one of the best and the most cut-for-role players uh, that they've announced out there. Strategically, I think they've got the best team. Um, and I'll throw you a different name. For me, it's Hassan Ali. I think he's going to play a huge part for Pakistan in this uh, T20 uh, World Cup. Um, Yes, yes, with the ball, we know how what he can do with the new ball. Uh, he, he'll, he'll be given this role. You know, I'm pretty sure Afridi and a spinner will open up, either Nawaz or Imad. And then he'll be used as, he'll be coming in at the fifth over, then a few overs in the middle and perhaps over at the death. So he'll be used very uh, tactfully uh, for, with, uh, from the captain, you know. And I feel like um, he'll have that role of picking up wickets uh, between the sixth and the 15th over. You know, we know Haris Rauf is really good at the end. So between the sixth and 15th, Hassan Ali will have that crucial role of picking up uh, wickets. Uh, that's why I feel like Hassan Ali will be the player to watch out. And now you know Pakistan's middle order has Asif Ali, Khushdil Shah, Azam Khan. Um, and then we've already seen what Hassan Ali can do with the bat as well. So I'm actually looking at him as a power hitter as well, who can stabilize things and come and add those extra 20-30 runs that Pakistan usually requires after a slow start from you know the top order. So that's where Hassan Ali is my player to watch out for. That's a good pick as well. I must say one thing about Hassan Ali is he is so dangerous in those middle overs, yeah. be it an ODI, be it in T20s. He's always the key for Pakistan to pick up wickets in those middle order overs. So very good pick right there. Uh, I just want to say something. Pakistan has a good middle order. What are you talking about? Though? But that's not a conversation for this video. That's for next time, definitely. But I, I, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Uh, hey, I didn't say they have Zora, a good middle order. If you're calling Hassan Ali as a finisher, then there's already hey, something I didn't say there. they have a good middle order. I said what the best available talent they have picked. Um, yeah, the, this is a conversation. Like, I mean, I don't want Shoei Malik and all of those Wahab Riyazes and all of them to come back. Looking at that, I'm okay, okay with fair. Asif Ali Kushtosha. Fair enough. If, if, if that's your reasoning, and again, <laughs> you're the cricket analyst, right? So I, I will base this on your judgment. But let's talk about Australia. There has been a lot of talk about Australia uh, being weak. Australia, probably ter one, one of the least favorites for this World Cup. But the funny thing is, yes, they lost 4-1 in West Indies and in Bangladesh, but they didn't have a few of their main players, right? And you can, you can kind of say maybe their bench isn't as strong, but some of their players coming back would benefit them a lot. So for Australia, Rukaya, who would you have to go for as your player to watch out for? First of all, I would say that I would agree with all, uh, you know, the talk that's going around. For me, Australia is not one of the top contenders purely because of what you just said, right? Their main cricketers have been out uh, for, I don't know, 
four months at least. They haven't played much cricket. Maybe they've been playing a little bit of domestic cricket here and there. But historically, top performers at the BBL have not performed well in the UAE. So um, for me, I think uh, two names I'm going to give you for Australia. One is David Warner. He's struggling. He hasn't played cricket for God knows how long. He's coming back into the IPL as a preparation, we can assume, for uh, the T20 World Cup, but he's not finding form. Yet, uh, I mean, when he played day before yesterday, uh, I just didn't see that David Warner, that, that, you know, attitude that David Warner always has, the attacking mentality, it's missing. So for me, I think David Warner really needs to find his form quickly if Australia are to, uh, you know, become one of the main contenders for this World Cup. And another name I'm going to throw out there is Pat Cummins. Because again, just like David Warner, he's been out of the cricketing setup for a while. Uh, so he really needs, and he's not playing the IPL. So he's not going to have much game practice before uh, the T20 World Cup other than for the warm-up game. So he needs to find his form soon. If these two can come back into their prime, even, uh, you know, towards the middle or closer towards the end of the World Cup, then Australia have a fighting chance. Interesting, interesting. If you had to pick one, if you had to pick one player out of those two, who would that be? Warner. Warner, okay, interesting. He's a game changer. Wow. Yeah. I think well, Zora would agree with me as well. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass it down to Zora then. Yeah, I, I, I can't agree more, man. David Warner, three-time Orange Cap winner in the IPL. If he gets going, um, it's going to be very hard for teams to contain him. However, I'll give you a different name, Glenn Maxwell. Uh, Glenn Maxwell, I feel like, uh, you know, is in the form of his life right now. If you see uh, the first half of the IPL, he was very impressive. Um, and he's kind of showed that right now, I think he probably understands how batting works on these type of wickets. And I'm very excited to see what he can do. Because if he gets going with these reverse sweeps, paddle sweeps, he scoop shots, uh, that's the end uh, for the other team. And also, don't forget, he's off spinners. On these uh, wickets against left-handers, his off spinners will come in handy as well. So I think Glenn Maxwell is the player to watch out for me, uh, for Australia. Right. Okay, let's go to a team that... A lot of people are calling the underdogs, but in the UAE, they're really good, called Afghanistan. I, I definitely think Afghanistan needs to be considered as a legitimate threat in this year's T20 World Cup. And I think Afghanistan is just specialized for T20, right? Mm -hmm. Every yeah. single player in that squad is a specialist T20 player who now plays in, you know, various leagues across the planet. So a lot of them have, uh, you know, rubbed shoulders with several greats. And have become greats in uh, themselves. You know, first name comes to mind is Rashid Khan, and um, I know he's not the captain. That was another controversy um, out there. But I think Rashid Khan is going to be uh, the key to Afghanistan's success uh, because solely because he has the most experience and he has matched up against a lot of these international players. Um, you know, who are going to come out there onto the T20 World Cup center stage. So I think he has the key. He's got a, even though he's not the official captain, he's got to lead, uh, you know, the boys out there. And um, I just think their spin combinations are just absolutely threatening. You know, they've got uh, Rashid Khan, they've got Mujib, they've got Kes Ahmed, who is another young uh, spinner who's played, you know, I think he played in the 100, he's played in the BBL, and he's also played in the Lankan Premier League. So these spinners are, for me, uh, the biggest threat Afghanistan could have. Yeah, I mean, Rukaya is spot on with the analysis over there. Um, the only concern I have is Afghanistan is dangerous if the wickets have been friendly. And whatever I've seen so far in the IPL, the paces are getting more yeah. out of the wickets uh, than the spinners. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, big names over there. One name, a uh, different name, Hazratullah Zazai. Uh, if he gets going <laughs> with his uh, left-handed... Yeah, with the Zazai storm up to, at, at the top of the order, just like how... He did for Peshawar Zelmi. Um, it'll be, uh, you know, a game changer for Afghanistan over there. I think they have the good bowling uh, in terms of spin and a few fast bowlers here and there if they can, uh, you know, help the spinners out. And if the batting gets going right at the top, you know, if Zazai starts in and what he's got a good back lift, uh, strong golf swing, strong wrist work, extremely strong wrist work, powerful wrists. And if he can use all of that, uh, you know, I think he'll be the player to watch out for. And if he gets going, he'll be the man of the tournament as well. Yeah, Zazai is a beast. And thank you for mentioning Peshawar Zalmi in that conversation, Zora. Because I know he was just so dangerous 
It was like, I remember a game, re- literally in this PSL, I was like, oh, I was not going to get close. <laughs> and I went off. And then I was like, right, I should take that back. And if you see, uh, he he scored back-to-back uh, 50s and then he won two man of the uh, yeah. matches as well. So he's someone who's a momentum play. If he gets going, then he carries that form to the next game. He's not like a one-game, uh, you know, one-innings player. He'll carry that form throughout the tournament. So it's very important for Afghanistan, uh, you know, that Zazai gets going. Yeah, 100%. Um, let's talk about India because there's, for, for me personally, for me personally, I thought India's T20 squad was exactly what I would have picked, all right? Which a lot of people would say, wow, you no know Shikha Dhawan, no Chahil, no this, no that. But personally, I thought that squad selection was brilliant. Who would you pick as the player uh, to watch out for from an Indian perspective? No two thought, uh, There's no two thoughts about that. It's Virat Kohli. Um, the, it's his last World Cup as a captain. I think he has everything to prove and nothing to lose. So um, he's going to want to go out there on a high. Uh, just like they gave that farewell to Sh- uh, Sachin Tendulkar in his last World Cup. I know this is not the last one he's playing, but he deserves to win um, uh, an ICC trophy before uh, he step down, steps down as captain. So I definitely think Virat Kohli... Um, if he gets going, um, you know, we've seen what he can do in the T20 format as well. He's that one, you know, determined player. The minute Virat Kohli gets going, he's, uh, there's nobody who can match him. Um, and a uh, very controversial opinion given I'm on screen with uh, two Pakistanis. But in my opinion, he's got the best cover drive in uh, international cricket right now. No, Virat Kohli has a beautiful cover drive as well. Technically, it's not right. If you look mm-hmm. at the techniques of oh, playing yeah, a cover drive, it's not right. Barbara Azam is way ahead. Way ahead. Sangakara was probably the best. Ian Bell yeah, was the best. Yeah, all time favorite is Kumar Sangakara. Yeah. Uh, but if you look that. at technically, Virat Kohli's cover drive is weak. But his head position is good. That's why he gets that ball. But that's also his weakness. If you see in the test matches, he yeah, gets out to these as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, leaving that aside, Virat Kohli, obviously a good, good player and you can never write him off. But I'll throw a different name in here. Uh, for me, India's trump card is going to be Varun Chakravarti. And the four was Varun Chakravarti balls. Um, mystery spinner, first time playing mm-hmm. in the World Cup. A lot of players haven't seen him as well. Um, he's got a good, uh, you know, he drifts the ball in. Yeah. That's the best thing. He'll be balling with the new ball, first over, drifting it in. Um, you know, to the likes of Jason Roy, Josh Butler, etc. So, some big names over there. It will be very hard. If he can, uh, you know, uh, contain them, get early wickets for India. Um, India, there's no stopping India after that with Bumrah and all the other spinners that you have, Rahul Chawar, J- Jadeja. Uh, it's going to be very hard to stop India. So, his four overs will be crucial. His four overs of mystery spin will be crucial. He's got a very good carom ball, which is going to be a threat. He doesn't turn the ball. He doesn't spin the ball too much. Uh, but the new ball drifts in a lot. And if he can get that ball to drift in continuously uh, throughout the four overs, he's going to be a dangerous player. So, India's trump card for me, Warren Chakravarti. Yeah, and actually one thing I just want to back up to what Zora said um, just now. I think why, a lot of people would argue, you know, Chehel has been their star spinner over the past years. He deserved this position. But I would agree completely with Zora. I think Varun Chakravarti is a trump card for them. Purely because in these UAE conditions, the like he said, the drift as well as the pace at which he bowls at is yeah. much more suited to the UAE conditions. He bowls stump to stump. It's very difficult for batsmen to come down uh, the pitch and, you know, hit hit him over uh, the infield. So that's why I think Varun Chakravarti has uh, that slight think, edge. Ruka, you reminded me, this this IPL, he was bowling around 95 to 100 kilometers yeah. per hour. Yes. You know, it's very quick. Right, okay. Let, let, let's talk about another team. And you mentioned a couple of players. There, You mentioned Jason Roy. You mentioned Joss Butler uh, from England. So let's talk about England. England are an interesting side, considering the fact that, you know, their main pace bowler that they were thinking was going to lead them everywhere in the white ball format, unfortunately, is injured. Then their best all-rounder, even though in T20s he hasn't been the greatest as an all-rounder, but it's just the persona, it's just that person when he's within the side, it kind of changes the approach. Ben Stokes is unavailable. Now, uh, they've, they've got quite a few really good players brought in. One player I really want to mention, and I mention it on every show, so I'm going to do it now as well. Liam Livingston. This guy yeah. <laughs> has been so good domestically and finally gets a chance. And everyone's talking about Liam Livingston. If you had to pick a player, though, Rukaya, yeah, if you had to pick a player to watch out for from an England perspective, who would that player be? 
Okay, so I'm going to give you a name. Some of you may not even know about who this is, but I'm very excited and I think he definitely deserves this place in the squad. And that's going to be Timmel Mills because uh, he has been fabulous in the domestic circuit. Um, his death bowling is probably one of the best in the world. Um, and especially in the 100, you saw he was a crucial part of uh, uh, that win for the Southern Brave. Um, he's also performed against India when they toured. So I think he's definitely going to, and um, he has that skill of varying the pace and he has some uh, amazing death bowling skills. So I think Timur Mills is a trump card that England have got there. Not many people in the international circuit have seen him, seen too much of him. So um, he's got that mystery element as well. And like you said, if I had to pick a second player, it would definitely be Liam, Liam Livingston because um, he's just, he can take the game away from any team. Yeah. I just want to add something about Timur Mills. Uh, there's a you can see on Crick Info there was a picture they shared about a month ago or something where he was in the top five best death bowlers in the past yeah. uh, four or five years or something like that with one of the lowest economies yeah. and the number of wickets was, was brilliant so yeah he has a deadly Yorker you mentioned his change of pace but the guy has back problems the, ba the guy cannot bowl more than four overs but then he's still bowling 140 145 kilometers per hour getting those Yorkers in he is absolutely brilliant so yeah Tamar Mills is a very good choice Zora, what about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, some great names. Livingston, uh, Tamar Mills. Uh, I'm going to give you a different name. Uh, Joss the Boss. Joss Butler ah. for me. Um, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I don't think there's any question in his uh, skills or, or his credibility as a T20 player. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can question him in the test format. You can question him at times at the ODI format as well. But in T20, Joss the Boss, you know, he all he needs is three or four overs and he can... Come in with his sweeps, reverse sweeps, his shots down the ground, very good against spin, a deadly player. And you can he can open as well if if needed. And maybe England will open with him yeah, in the T20 will. setup as well. So uh, I'm excited to see Josh the boss. Um, the other thing is, he's the vice captain of the team. Okay. And the way Morgan is playing and the form, especially what I saw today as well. I have. I won't be surprised if he's benched in some of the games, uh, if, no. the, if his form continues. And if that It'll happens, never then... Happen. Yeah. If that if that happens, yeah. then uh, if Joss will take over captaincy as well. So looking at all of that, I think Joss the boss is someone uh, you have to look out for. Right. I, I'm not being defensive. I'm just folding my arms for the fact that, you know, <laughs> someone could say Morgan would not be selected after having, what, an average of less than 15 over the past year and a half with his bat. It's just shocking. But he, this is the thing. They're, they're not going to drop him. It's unlikely. It's unlikely. But if they do, that would be a very bold move. I can only think of potentially one captain in the world right now uh, who would be able to give their position if they were in such bad form. And that's someone like Kane Williamson. But this guy is so talented. We're well, going to talk I mean, about New Zealand next. Well, anyway. I mean, actually, it has happened in the past of the 2014 World Cup. Uh, uh, Dinesh Chandimal was the captain of the <laughs> Sri Lankan side. And then he... This he, is Zora's he favorite himself. story. He benched himself <laughs> and then gave it to Lasit Malinga uh, yeah. midway. And then Malinga ended up winning the T20 World Cup. So I think we won the World Cup because of uh, Dinesh Chandimal. I'm, I'm happy that he's in the part of he's part of Sri Lanka squad. He'll probably be benched as well. Uh, so that's our lucky charm that will be going with us uh, for, the, for the World Cup. I, I just want to say, Zora, I just want to say something, right? That is Dinesh Chandimal. This is Owen Morgan who won the 2019 World Cup. Yeah, yeah. it's a big they can't. He's too much of an asset as a captain, yeah. right? He's yeah. He's... Captaincy and strategies alone just let him walk into more that than side. more than that that left-handed thing that comes in the middle order uh, you know with Milan yeah. so if Milan's coming in number three your bears to at two then you want a left-hander at five uh, so I think he'll play he'll play a good role but then it's interesting where they say Livingston so I don't know the, England's batting order is all jumbled up right now yeah hundred uh, percent right, okay so we talked about England and I mentioned the name Kane Williamson there so let's talk about New Zealand uh, New Zealand. Could they be the dark horses in this in this IPL? What do you guys think? But no, not really. Don't tell me that. That's going to be a long conversation. <laughs> Let's talk about the players to watch out for, okay? So, Rukaya, for yourself, uh, who'd be that one player from New Zealand? So, I'm going to talk about somebody who just lit fire to the stage of the World T uh, Test Championship final, and that's going to be uh, Jamison, Kyle Jamison. I like to see how well he can perform in the T20 setup. We haven't seen him at his best yet. For New Zealand, for RCB, he hasn't been as threatening as we know he could be. Because, uh, you know, at, at the, in the test format, he's just been ripping batters apart left, right and centre. Uh, you know, his extra height gives him that bounce, awkward bounce and the awkward height, which uh, gives him that edge over different bowlers. So, 
I really want to see what he can do, um, you know, for New Zealand in the T20 World Cup. And I think he's going to play a key role in their uh, pace attack uh, for the T20 World Cup. Is there a point there? Uh, Zora? Sorry, yeah. Go on, Zora. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, for me, um, it's it's probably a very well, well it's a well-known name. No surprises here. For me, it's Kane Williamson, actually. Um, I think he's going to be... Uh, the player to watch out for from New Zealand solely because the way he plays spin. I think in the entire batting lineup, no one is that this technically equipped to play spin. Um, Kane Williamson is uh, like right number one, right? Like at the top five, if I have to say, the, uh, you know, the players that play spin well, yeah. Kane Williamson is not probably in the top three. Um, and looking at the UAE conditions, I know right now looking at the IPL, it's more pace friendly, but it will get uh, uh, spin sure. friendly as the tournament goes on. So I think Kane Williamson will play a very crucial role in the middle order. Um, just with his, you know, the his rotating strike, because if you see, he's got, you know, he's got all his Guptils, the Nishams, the Phillips, the Conways, the, the Tim Seiferts. So that the player, that the guy who's going to build the innings, who's going to rotate strike, hold one end, that's going to be Kane Williamson. And I don't see big, big scores this IPL. I mean, this uh, T20 World Cup. So I feel like uh, when it comes to managing scores of 150 and planning and building your innings uh, intelligently, I think Kane Williamson is the name that comes to my mind. Uh, just talk about, you know, one specific team uh, that everyone has written off, completely written off. South Africa, right? And um, I'm just going to go straight in and ask you, who's your player? Because for me, I think their squad selection was a bit interesting, a bit weird. I didn't expect it to be so um, less finisher and less aggressive as I expected. Mm. I, I thought someone like Yanan Milan or someone like Calvarene yeah. would have potentially uh, gotten a chance. But anyways, that's a story for another time. So who would you pick, Rukaya, if you had to pick a player to watch out for for South Africa? You're right. I think South Africa is a very top-heavy uh, backing lineup. All their batters are suited for that uh, you know, opening role. So that's going to be another dilemma for them to see who opens and where, uh, who comes in where. But for me, I think uh, I may be biased because of what happened yesterday, but I think their perfor star performer is going to be Andrik Nokia. Um, he's got the pace, uh, he's got the experience, and he's got Rabada by his side. So the duo of Nokia and Rabada is probably, at the moment, the best uh, fast bowling duo in the world. For me, I would say even better than uh, Bumrah, even better than Bhuvaneshwar. Um, even better than Pat Cummins, I would go for these two if if I had to pick any fast bowlers. And I think uh, that's going to be South Africa's trump card here. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with Rukaya. Um, for me, it's going to be Rassi van der Dusen from South Africa. A very a name that no one's talking about. Before I talk about him, I think we also have to understand with South Africa, um, there's this quota system that's there as well, where they have to have a certain amount of coloured players in a squad. So because of that, like the, the players like Johnnyman Milan and Kyle Verinen have missed out. Otherwise, they walk into this. So that's the only explanation I have. Otherwise, I don't see why Milan would not make it. Um, anyways, uh, Wander Dusen is very good against spin. I've seen him play in the GT20 here in Canada, uh, and slow pitches, turning pitches, uh, ball staying, you know, low, etc. And he was very, very good. Uh, so whatever I've seen of Dusen, I think. Uh, he, he, he will play a very crucial part in the middle order. Um, and a, along with, uh, you know, him, I want to name a, a player. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, but he, he's a left-arm spinner. And he's called uh, Bojan uh, Fortuyn? Fortuyn? Fortuyn, yeah. yeah Fortuyn, Fortuyn. yeah. I, whatever I've seen mm. of him so far, I think he's extremely uh, useful. Four overs, he gets it fast, uh, doesn't go for runs. Um, very good left hand, uh, left arm spinner. He can ball well with the new ball. Uh, also in the middle overs, uh, you know, he's he's not like an Imad Vasim will only give you good uh, overs uh, with the new ball. He'll come yeah. in in the middle and he's bowling well with Keshav Maharaj. So I think the way they use for twin will be uh, very crucial. So these two names, but mainly Van der Dusen solely because of the way he plays spin again. I want to talk about Tabrish Chamsi very quickly. And uh, Tabrish Chamsi is number one T20I bowler in the world. Um, do you think he's going to be quite crucial for South Africa? Because you mentioned Fortune, you mentioned Maharaj, but Zora, don't you think uh, Sh Tabre Shamsi, the way he bowls, plus being a wrist spinner, he'll be a lot more dangerous than someone like Fortune and and uh, Maharaj? He's the baller to look out for in this T20 World Cup, to be honest. He's the number one T20 baller. Very, very impressed with him. If you see that there's not a lot of good Chinamans around in international cricket right now, but mm -hmm. the one thing good with Tabre Shamsi is... Uh, the dip and drift that he's generating. 
you know that is just amazing right now and he's deceiving a lot of batters uh through that he's turning the ball as well you know he's got a good turn uh, as well and he's using conditions very smart and he's always he's got his he's got the fielders in the right place you know he's got his square leg he's got his mid wicket he knows what the batter is going to do and he bowls according to his plans and the other bowlers from the other end help create that pressure for him to get wickets as well so he's got a good uh, you know a dig uh, a good gig going on with uh, south south africa cricket right now however however um it depends on the speed study balls if he can understand the speed of the wicket and what's the speed required on this wicket and if he can ball according to that he will be successful the moment he flights the ball or he balls a little slow uh, and he, he gives air i think a good batter who can use his good footwork who come down the pitch will will clean it will take him for a lot of runs so he has got to be very very smart because uh, it's hard to judge him against uh, you know a west indies or against uh, a sri lanka uh when when he'll be up against uh, you know australia england india that's when his real test is going to be actually since mm-hmm. we're talking about sabresh samshi there's one mm-hmm. point i'd like to add and one thing i think people don't notice what sabresh samshi brings to the field is his attitude there are lots of these players um you know in international cricket that may not be the most skillful on the field but they're purely the most they contribute the most because of that they always want to contribute they're looking for somewhere where you know they can put their hand up uh, you know go up to the captain and be like no i think we should do this i think i can do this and i think one person in that south africa squad that does that is sabresh shamsi he's always got this positive attitude he wants to contribute we saw even uh, you know day before yesterday he wasn't in the playing level for rajasthan royals he was the first guy running out of the boundary uh, uh, you know onto the field to congratulate them when they won so that's the kind of attitude i think that yeah. wins matches and uh, you know gets you across the line when the tough when it's going tough and he's got a good celebration these days as well with the shoe and the call to, for the ipl i think now it, we might not see that because he made it to the ipl but anyways <laughs> i thought i'd add that as <laughs> last team i want to mention is uh, the team of uh, match winners left right and center uh, shilla no sorry i mean west indies <laughs> yeah. uh, have loads of players who are genuinely T20 specialists right they're big names huge names if you had to pick one name rukaya who would that be for west indies okay this is going to be the universe boss's last t20 <laughs> world cup in my opinion unless he drags it on for another year and plays uh, the next one in australia but i think uh, this is going to be where he he wants to go out on a high uh, like i said virat kohli last one as captain chris gale last one in international cricket i think he's going to be the one to look out for unfortunately the form is not really on his side he hasn't been performing as well but i feel like if he gets a couple of games in the ipl he gets going he understands the conditions chris gale is the kind of guy he may fail two three games but when he gets going he can win you the match on his own so uh, for me it's going to be chris gale but i'm also going to give you another name because i'm not sure uh, you know how many games chris gale is actually going to get and that's going to be shimron hetmyer not many people uh, would actually look at him even in the playing 11 the first 11 but i think he should he should walk in there because uh, he's that power hitter he's a finisher and he has the ability to hit 360 degrees around the ground with which not a lot of west indian batsmen has we see you know the russells and the pollards they hit straight down the ground this guy can hit the ball anywhere Uh, so for me, that's why I would choose him, uh, you know, as a finisher uh, for the West Indies. Interesting, interesting, right? interesting yeah. names. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if Gale or Hetmyer will get a chance over here, especially the way Rutherford has been playing. But anyways, uh, yeah, valid, valid point over there. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Kyron Pollard. I think he's gonna be the player to watch out for solely because of all the IPL experience that he's gonna bring. in for west indies and not just the batting uh, i know he has a big issue picking the googly okay he doesn't pick the googly which is a very big issue and if the other teams do their homework uh, they can get him out very easily and bowl the right spinners to him uh, but leaving that aside if the wicket is flat batting conditions uh, you know pace is on uh, even if mediocre spinners are on kyron pollard is going to be uh, brutal you know um, and he's going to be very very dangerous uh, Uh, and of course you have uh, your two time mvp ipl mvp you know andre russell as well if any of these two get going it's going to be done deal over there but uh, kyron pollard especially i think uh, because of he gets to bat more in mumbai indians compared to andre russell in kkr so looking at that i think the experience that he's going to gain 
will be crucial for West Indies. Uh, so Kyron Pollard for me, and he's the captain as well. Um, and I'm, he's, he's whatever he's done so far, he's impressed me a lot with his changes, bowling changes, uh, backing youngsters, talking to them. I really like that as well. Uh, and don't forget, he's going to ball a few overs with these cutters as well, which I feel is going to be very crucial, especially if a spinner has a bad day and they don't have too many good spinners mm. going on in the squad. So if a spinner or a, a one of their genuine paces, say Ravi Rampal, has a bad day, he can always come in and chip in over or two uh, with slow cutters, off cutters, like cutters, whatever, you know, uh, and take the pace of the ball. So, yeah, I think uh, Kyron Pollard, MVP for me. This final question before I let you guys go. If you had to pick four teams for the semis, which t which four teams would you consider uh, being in the top four for, in the uh, T20 World Cup? So, Rukaya, yourself first. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, so I would probably say India, West Indies, South Africa, and um, actually I think that fourth, st fourth spot can be very highly contended, but I'm going to give it to Pakistan. Uh, yeah. Just because they're going to come in with a little bit of fire and um, they've got, like Zora said, I think they've, they've got a squad that has highlighted their roles pretty well. So it's going to depend on whether the people who have been uh, selected for those roles turn up and perform or not. Fair yeah, point. and Asja, when you do a Pakistan review, uh, you know, do call me for that one, and uh, I'll I'll come, I'll be the only odd one, odd analyst out there giving you completely different opinions and insights, uh, while everyone else will be bashing the team over there. Uh, but yeah, for me, my four picks: um, India favorites, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I've got Pakistan as well. I think I, I'm seeing an India-Pakistan final. Uh, to be honest, um, England. England is there for me. And my fourth option uh, between uh, West Indies and South Africa, I've gone for South Africa. I think I'm, I'm giving, a, I'm, like I know Ajit said this as well, a lot of teams have uh, written off uh, uh, South Africa and, you know, West Indies is there and, you know, your other giants, New Zealand as well. So I, I, for me, I think it's South Africa solely on current form. Okay, they have match winners in their side. Um, and why not West Indies? Because it's either South Africa or West Indies uh, from that group. Why Why South Africa or West Indies? Solely because I think you you have too many power hitters in one team. I don't see who's going to craft the innings in the West Indies side. Nicholas Puran, we've seen with Punjab Kings how inconsistent he is. And I don't know if he if he can take on that role. Yeah, he didn't have too much, uh, too great. Yeah, and I think the, you have a Miller, yeah, right. you have a Quinton Decock, uh, you have a Temba Bavuma. You have different roles that I see, different uh, different options within the within the batting, within the spin department. Pace is probably the best, Rukaya said. So, South Africa for me. Interesting. Wow. First time on this channel so far, <laughs> someone has picked South Africa in their top four. So... <laughs> And both of you picked it. So that's that's great. Thank you, both of you, for joining. For everyone watching, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel, to Cricket for Us 2.0, to the Cricket Analyst. Right? Great, great content there, as you've seen today. Brilliant <laughs> insights by both of these guys. Everyone, thank you so much. And until next time, take care, stay safe. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Thank Bye. you for having us, Astrid. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.